In this Madam tutorial, we're gonna be looking at the epsilon and delta definition. Really cool animation if you're trying to explain limits, right? Really, really nice. It, you know, it really just gets the abstraction perfect. And really, this is all we're doing. We add everything on, we wait, and then we, we play the value tracker. Animate it, set the value, go there and back. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna import our stuff from Madam and we're gonna get some helper functions. So just before you get going here, imagine you've got the whole screen and you've got the plane on the screen, right? Now, if we have a look at these epsilon lines, these are our horizontal lines. So we take an X point, we consider a DX value, it hits a graph on an axis, and this line length, pretty much just wanting to give the effect that it goes along the entire screen. So I just want it to be long enough that it goes along the entire screen. I am, I want it to be white, okay? Now again, this epsilon line, I'm, I want it to just be more than a line, so I'm gonna make it a vector group, where we've got a dashed line, it starts at the origin, and it goes along the line length, just because I want a nice long line. So I get the length of it first, and then I'm gonna move it. So I move to axis, coordinates to point, x plus dx. Now this x point, that's typically where the limit does not exist, okay? And then I also wanna to hit the y value of that particular point, set the color to the color, but in my case, I want it to be white. I'm also going to add a dot there. All right, so that's gonna give me my, imagine this is our function going along here. That's gonna give me my upper one. And imagine this is our, imagine this, this in here. This is the X value we're considering right in there. We're also going to have one going down below there, right where it is a distance of DX away on either side with respect to the output of the function. So that's what we've got here. Line two, same drill, except we subtract the X. Dot two, same drill, except we subtract the X, right? Mainly focusing on the input of the function. And then, all that stuff is added to the vector group and we return that. So that is going to give us our epsilon lines. Then we wanna get our delta lines. Very similar thing, takes in an X point, DX value on an axis, and it's got a length of 20. I wanna have vertical line, vertical line, about that particular point, which is normally the point where the limit does not exist. Similar thing, it's a dashed line, set the length first. So I want it to just be a nice long line that takes up the whole length of the screen. Then I'm gonna move it to X plus DX. And then I'm gonna have this one as X minus DX. So I'm gonna have two lines about the graph point there. Okay, you've got DX there, DX there. And then return that. So that's gonna be my delta line. So I've got my epsilon and delta lines that I can call. And then I wanna give the effect of the faded lines that are kind of sitting there in the background as if like this is the point where the limit does not exist. Okay, and I can do that. I can just create, I get faded lines where it takes an X, a graph, an axis, the line length, and so on, so on. But I set the opacity of this one to 0.5. Again, everything's vector group. Now I'm just taking in one epsilon line and one delta line here. Now again, it considers that X point, but you'll see here that I've got X plus 0 0.000001 for that point. And we need to put that within Python because if we just put X, typically that X point has the limit does not exist, so if you're doing this for the function, for example, x squared over x, and you try and evaluate this, if you try and evaluate this, sub n x equals zero, you're going to get what's called an indeterminate, which is something's going wrong, uh, and essentially, at x equals zero, that function has, it, it's not even defined, right? So you've got to put in that, plus 0 0.00001, otherwise if you run it, uh, Python will give you error, nothing's gonna happen there. So then we return that stuff. That's our epsilon and delta lines added to that vector group there. So now this little function here, this is that that you get. It's like here's the undefined point and here's the range and see if they're connecting as one another get along there. I didn't really know how to do this. 
Uh, so I sort of just went, okay, well, it's gonna hit an X point. It's gonna have a DX value. There's gonna be some range uh, that we want it to go out from this way and this way. It's hitting an axis, it's hitting a graph and so on and so forth. Again, there's gonna be a result. I wanna put a circle or a dot on that undefined point, which is again where that 0 0.00001 is coming from. And then I wanna give the effects of the line, okay? So this is created by a for loop where I'm just creating tiny, tiny, tiny little lines. Uh, and then if the X point lies in the interval where the limit does not exist, uh, return a vectorized point because nothing's gonna happen otherwise. So essentially this is the scene. We've got an axis. We've just called some parameters here. I want there to be numbers. I don't want there to be tips. We've got a graph where this is just two plus X cubed minus eight over X. And this is gonna be undefined at X equals zero. So you can't put that point in there. I've called some latex to give me the uh, equation of the line on the screen. And then I've got a value tracker for DX. And so I want this thing to approach zero. That's really what I want it to do. I've got my epsilon lines, okay, where I'm saying x equals zero, that's where the limit does not exist. Okay, base that dx value from the value tracker, hit the graph, which is this guy right here, and then the axis is this guy right there. So just put it on that graph, on that axis, at the point x equals zero, because that's the point where the limit does not exist and consider the value tracker that we've set up. Similar thing for the delta lines. Same thing for the faded lines, right? Except those don't need an updater because they're not changing. Okay, and then we've just got that little effect of the input lines transformed to become the output lines. So the input line was pretty much, it was just a line going from negative one along to one along the X axis and we had that circle in the middle there. Uh, and then the output range is that function that we had defined up above. Then really, this is all we're doing. We add everything on, we wait, and then we, we play the value tracker, animate it, set the value, go there and back, create the input range, and then transform it to be the output range. So as if to say, well, does this input match that output range? and then go there and back again, just so we're really illustrating out, well, what is the limit for this particular function here and does it exist, uh, up, you know, with the considering X from the left-hand side and X from the right-hand side.